ContraPoints is a fantastic left-wing YouTuber. Her in-depth and beautifully produced videos on topics ranging from incels and neo-Nazis to cancel culture and justice have always been a must-watch for me. And this includes her latest video on voting. Although I don't agree with many of the points in her video, which I will get to later, I feel obliged to state the obvious. Just because you disagree with someone on one issue doesn't mean they are now the enemy. That said, we are not the enemy. By we, I mean the left wing. The people who generally agree about one issue and disagree on pretty much everything else. Justice for the powerless. It is this issue that gives birth to all other left wing battlegrounds. From healthcare as a human right to anti imperialism, anti racism, equality and dignity regardless of how you were born or how thoroughly life managed to crush you. So when we ask ourselves the pressing question, which of the two ghouls that managed to slither through the intestines of the body politic and emerge as a candidate for the most powerful single human being in history should I support? Joe Biden or Donald Trump? And let's not kid ourselves, we are talking about support. We should own it. The choices we make when voting or not voting affect the lives of human beings indirectly. ContraPoints made the correct observation that Donald Trump is a fascist. A fascist who intends to fill the Supreme Court with anti-abortion fanatics, withdraw from the Paris Agreement, appoint climate change deniers to head climate research, attempt to remove medical non-discrimination protections from trans people, malign the integrity of elections, declare the press the enemy of the people, and cozy up to white nationalists, telling them to stand by. We need to acknowledge that when we say Trump is a fascist, we are talking about fascism at home and not abroad. If we include the rest of the world, then the Obama administration had no qualms about supporting authoritarians and actual fascists, from the Azov Battalion in Ukraine to the fascists in all but name in Saudi Arabia, who bomb school children among other civilians and dismembered journalists who oppose their rule. Trump is, of course, complicit in the same crimes, but we shouldn't forget that for eight years the Obama-Biden cabinet was the main supporter of these factions and many others. We came, we saw, he died. <laughs> the war in Libya, which destroyed an entire country and brought back slavery to its citizens, did affect the lives of actual people and we should count that when we calculate utilitarian choices and harm reduction. When we talk about fascists at home, Trump did urge the Proud Boys to stand by, and he openly welcomes the electoral help of racists and bigots. So did Biden, by the way, who is very proud of Strom Thurmond's help in writing the crime and drug bills that were used to unfairly incarcerate many African Americans. If you have a piece of crack cocaine no bigger than this quarter that I'm holding in my hand, one quarter of one dollar, we passed a law through the leadership of Senator Thurman and myself and others, a law that says, if you're caught with that, you go to jail for five years. You get no probation, you get nothing other than five years in jail. Judge doesn't have a choice. It is hard to say who is more frightening, racists in the street or racists in the Senate. Biden's laws were segregationist, but he is not an open fascist himself, and in that sense he is better than Trump. But I think we can all agree, the choice is not as clear-cut as many on the left say it is. The utilitarian case for Joe Biden gets even shakier when we see that with all his open racism towards immigrants, Donald Trump cannot catch up with the number of deported and separated families under Obama and Biden's first term. These are real fates of real people. When we shame each other for not being strategic and utilitarian enough, we should remember who built the cages on the border. On global warming, Trump did pull out of the Paris Accords. American CO2 emissions though remained the same under the last four presidents. It is not hyperbole to say that humanity is headed for a climate disaster. It is hyperbole to say that Trump has caused substantially more damage than the people who preceded him or the people who will replace him. This could of course change during a second Trump term. American industries will be emboldened by Trump's withdrawal from the Paris Accords. 
but American industry spends money on both sides of the aisle and has continued to pollute whether the president was a Democrat or a Republican. Joe Biden pledged to strengthen the CIA, and he may well succeed where Donald Trump failed, to successfully overthrow and take power away from indigenous and other disenfranchised people in Latin America and elsewhere, no matter how sure we claim to be that our candidate will not lead to an atrocity. With both candidates, this is a possibility. We cannot shame each other because the choice is not simple. Both candidates have a record of abusing their power, but it could turn out to be true that Biden has changed. ContraPoints deserves a lot of credit for driving her points home while avoiding outright voter shaming in the way people like Vosh have done. If you are one of the rapscallion dipshits running around more interested in pride and posture than you are in making the world a better place, shut the fuck up. ContraPoints makes the case for harm reduction under Biden in a much more intelligent way, by waging a debate against herself, the radical part of her own mind that refuses to see the obvious utilitarian choice. If you are trans or care deeply about LGBT issues, or you feel strongly about abortion and the damage Supreme Court nominees might do to reproductive rights, it really is an obvious choice. Weaken the court, by the way. If you are of Libyan descent or care deeply about foreign policy, CIA coups abroad, NSA spying and the war on whistleblowers, then the choice might not feel so obvious. We are forced to choose which people we care about most, which to prioritize, and which to carry in the back of our minds. Instead of fighting, bickering, and splitting into camps over which ghoul is the lesser of two evils, we should be doing the obvious. We should respect each other's intelligence, even though in hindsight we might be wrong. And we all might be wrong. Because a choice between two evils is never easy. We should not forget about the single issue that holds us together, despite the million other issues that separate us. Justice for the powerless.